So hello and welcome to the presentation of the paper titled The Attachment to a Social Purpose as Leverage for Change, the case of the first certified B Corp in Spain. The agenda is organized in five sections. Introduction, theoretical framework, methodology, case study, and conclusions. This paper, which is aimed to present the case of two young rural entrepreneurs who gave birth to the first certified B corporation in Spain, named Almanatura, could have been approached from different angles. Although in this opportunity, the spotlight will be focused on the challenges of this company as a B corporation. Since its two main architects believe that Almanatura conceived as a social enterprise that acts as a change maker in rural areas, was unknowingly born as a B venture. More specifically, the aim was to know how and why the company was born, its evolution over time, with the main stages that have led to its current configuration, together with their challenges and strategies. Particular attention is paid to its profile as a B Corp. In addition, addressing the intimate interrelation between their personal and professional lives was essential for a better understanding of their business motivations and decisions, family origins, personalities and aspirations as individuals, and other personal features. Moving into the methodological framework, it has been divided in three subsections. The first on the United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, the second on the B Corporation, and the third and final one on the connection between B Corporations and sustainability. With regard to the Sustainable Development Goals, the starting point is the fact that rural communities are suffering a sharp decline as a result of the rapid process of urbanization throughout the world, which limits the opportunities to access basic services and resources, as well as restricts personal and professional development. These issues, together with the population, aging, increasing in forest fires, and so on, are closely connected with the United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, particularly to Goal 11 on sustainable cities and communities. In the case of Spain, this problem is even more acute, considering the European average. Within this framework, it is relevant to note that Armanatura has been guided by the purpose of enhancing rural life and preventing depopulation in rural areas long before the Sustainable Development Goals were established. Moving into the B Corp subsection, it has to be clarified firstly that according to Chang and Kelly, B Corps are a growing group of social enterprises with a high level of commitment to maintaining a balance between the profit motive and corporate social responsibility, which is considered implicit in their business models. Therefore, they are characterized by combining economic and social returns. This movement in which companies are a tool for change and profits are considered a means to achieve social ends began in 2006. Nowadays, this pro-social business community is certainly vast, with global figures showing that it has grown over the years. In this sense, Stubbs refers to it as sustainable entrepreneurship, and more than all, as a movement that has already significantly transformed entrepreneurial practice. The latter authors also recognize that, empirically, we still know little about B the big corporations model, which is a clear research gap on which this study tries to shed some light. In the big corporation paradigm, the metrics for measuring success uh, are focused on five areas, governance, workers, community, the environment, and customers. It is important to note that the business that is a certified B corporation is not a different legal entity, but a member of a voluntary association subject to an assessment and ratings standard. Nevertheless, in some countries, 
such as Italy and the US, but not in Spain yet, the legal status of benefit corporation has been introduced. Therefore, although big corps and benefit corporations share much in common, there are a few significant differences between both figures. Thus, a benefit corporation is a judicial entity that voluntarily meets higher standards of corporate purpose, accountability, and transparency. While Abicorp is a company that has been certified by BILAP and proves to have met certain standards of social and environmental performance, accountability, and transparency. Finally, on the connection between big corporations and sustainability, companies operate nowadays in a context in which addressing sustainability issues is gaining increasing importance, having reached a strategic level. Therefore, since benefit corporations were legally created to accommodate two potentially conflicting ethical obligations, the fiduciary duty to shareholders and the social responsibility to the stakeholders, they, and by extension certified B Corps, are best understood within the broad context of CSR. This feature, by definition, positions them as a natural contributor to sustainability and a player to be aligned more easily with the sustainable development goals. Consequently, in this category of firms, the main difference is found in the way in which profits are made, that's it, through the, contact, through the conduct of business in a socially and environmentally responsible way, meeting the needs and expectations of increasingly conscious and demanding stakeholders. Concerning the methodology to reach the aim of this research, this has been qualitative and inductive based on a case study. Having used secondary data, semi-structured interviews with both entrepreneurs and direct observation in their headquarters. According to the literature, challenges related to the management of the dual mission together with the challenge of growth have gained particular relevance in this case as research questions. Going into the specifics of the case study, the first remarkable feature is the geographical context where the company is located. In a remote mountain village in the southwest of Spain, with fewer than 1,000 inhabitants and characterized by an acute, progressive demographic trend, age, population, and lack of opportunities. The human context is also significant. Two giant entrepreneurs who were born and raised in a rural environment with a strong attachment to their community and the determination to stay and not to abandon their, their roots, as so many other young people have been forced to do. They wondered how they could generate opportunities that could prevent the population in rural areas and the cascade of negative consequences that this entails. This motivation meant the purpose they wanted for their lives and was the trigger that gave rise to Alma Natura, where family values were transferred. But why this name? Alma is Spanish for soul because they put great intensity in what they do. And Natura because they seek to maintain people in the rural, natural environment. In the corporate chronology, the most relevant change occurred in 2004, when they transformed the original non-profit form of cultural association, which operated since its inception in 1997, but that resulted financially unsustainable because of its full dependence on public grants and subsidies, into a private firm, resituating themselves into a business logic able to combine social purpose and economic feasibility. As other important milestones uh, during the period 2005-2008, the company's turnover and the number of employees increased, whilst the field of activity expanded, although not always fully consistent with its original purpose. In 2009 and 2010, a very severe 
economic crisis hit the country, which reduced its portfolio of public customers dramatically. As a result, 2011 and 2012 were years of reinvention. Seeking a greater focus, its purpose was redefined, its catalog of services was reorganized, adding a new axis, and the search for clients is reoriented towards private corporations, diversifying their portfolio and moving away from dependence on public funds. In 2013, Almanatura was certified as, the, as a B Corp, the first in Spain. They verified the alignment of this formula with their values and the potential benefits it could provide. Almanatura started in 2013 with an overall B impact score of 89.7, the minimum to get the certification is 80, and has been rising till reaching the more recent score of 153.8. 200 is the maximum, which has allowed it to get a number of recognitions in the last few years, as displayed in the next slide. In addition to those related to the B Impact Report in the left hand side, in, 2000 and, um, uh, in 2018, the Spanish Network of the United Nations Global Compact awarded this company the Goal Sustainable Development Goal recognition for its contribution to achieving Goal 11 on sustainable cities and communities. In this chart, the evolution of its annual turnover is displayed, with a pronounced peak in recent years that has turned growth into a dilemma for these entrepreneurs. In this slide, as a token of its social results, the evolution of the total number of people in power is shown in blue. Together with, in red, the evolution of the number of people and power in relation to the purpose to maintain the rural population to its four areas of intervention, employment, education, health, and technology. 2017 was the year with the highest alignment, 86%, which sometimes can be in conflict with other business opportunities and lead to the reduction of this rate. Some final ideas to conclude. Growth management has become a challenge for this firm. In other words, how to keep the company under control at the same time that business and personal ambitions are made compatible. Business growth has been the lever for increasing the social impact of the company, but from a certain threshold, it generates some tensions with social and personal aspirations. As stated by Nigri and Del Baldo, these kind of firms need to manage their dual mission, integrate social and environmental goals in their business model, and incorporate accountability mechanisms, all while scaling up and garnering the necessary resources to be economically competitive, which is challenging, especially for SMEs such as Manatura. In addition, what this case has shown us is that the approach to this phenomenon has to be contingent, as the growth of our Manatura contradicts the results found by Parker et al. on North American certified B corporations. Consequently, other variables should be taken into consideration by researchers to explain the impact of this certification and its trade off, such as general and specific business environment, portfolio of resources and capabilities, competitive strategy, etc. But the COVID-19 arrived and suddenly everything changed. Now the big question mark is how to adapt the company to the new social and economic scenario full of uncertainties. That is, how will its purpose and its strategy be affected? But perhaps this can be a good option for an, another paper and another presentation. For now, thank you very much for your attention and hopefully um, this this case this paper has been of your interest. Thank you again.